another edition of RCE. This is Brock Palin again with Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and the OpenMPI project. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, Brock. How's it going? All right. Um, we have today a request we got a long time ago when we first started this show was to talk about Open Fabrics Enterprise, um, otherwise known as OFED. And we have with us two... Uh, are they release managers for OFED, or what exactly is their position in the OFED? Uh, I, I think I will defer to them uh, on, on what their exact positions are in Open Fabrics and Open Fabrics Enterprise Distribution. But yeah, I apologize to our listeners. We've, it's taken us a long time to get to this one, and uh, I don't think we even have a good excuse. It's just kind of taken us a long time to get here. Uh, yes. kinds of things. I, I even mention Open Fabrics on my blog periodically as well, too. I have to get the mandatory mention of the blog in there. Well, I know we heavily rely on Open Fabrics um, to support uh, several different vendors' equipment at the site I work at, uh, but let's go ahead and introduce them. I'm going to have trouble with some of the names here, but we have uh, Zipporit Coriant from Mellanox, and she's actually located in Israel. At Mellanox HQ, and we also have Betsy Zeller, who represents QLogic. Uh, Zipporah, how about you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit and tell us a little bit about your position in OFED. Hi, I'm Zipporah Corwin, a Senior Director at Mellanox Technologies, and uh, as part of my responsibility in uh, Mellanox, I'm responsible for the Linux driver in general, and the OFED stack in particular, and I'm actually doing the release coordination of OFED uh, since uh, uh, 06, and now, and from last year, I'm also the co-chair of the EWG uh, working group, and this is actually what I'm doing uh, in the OFED, is managing the releases, and of course, uh, one of the people working with me a lot on uh, this uh, um, software stack is uh, Betsy Zeller from QLogic. Betsy, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself also and how you are involved with OFED. Sure. Um, I'm out here in Mountain View, California. I'm the director of software at QLogic, responsible for the InfiniBand software stack for our HCA product. Um, been there for seven years since we, uh, we were originally Pascal and then were acquired by QLogic. Support and I have been working together on OFAD since the, pretty much the first meetings of it when um, the, the InfiniBand community decided that what was needed was an, uh, a shared common open source stack for InfiniBand. And that was back, I think, in 2005. Support, do you remember? Well, I'm not sure if it was 05 or 06, but I think first release was in 06. You know, I but think I you're think... right, it was 06. So it's been, it's been quite a while that we've been working together. Mm. Uh, before we continue, Zipporah, I uh, apologize for uh, butchering your name. You've told me a, a number of times, and I still can't quite get it out right. <laughs> but thanks again for bearing with us. Uh, well... Uh, there's one from Israel. I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you guys go ahead and explain what OFED stands for? It's Open Fabrics Enterprise Distribution. And the idea behind it is to take a, the code that is developed by different companies as an open source effort and make it a the distribution that will be good for the enterprise. That was the main uh, idea behind OFED, and uh, I think uh, actually it uh, became a real uh, success story in a way, uh, because uh, today the OFED uh, acronym and is used uh, widely, and what's more important is that the software is used uh, a lot in many clusters and by many users. Um, back in, um, I guess in Sonoma, in 2006, um, there, there was an open source, open fabric stack, but every customer was drawing from a different um, version of it because there was no organized way to present this software. So a developer would be working on, oh, 
let's pick, you know, Udapel. Um, and somebody would want Udapel and they would pull down that nightly build and then a different customer would want a different, you know, would want it on a different day and would pull down a different nightly build. Udapel is maybe a bad example because it always did very well at doing releases. But other software stacks were being pulled down by different people at different random times who would run into bugs. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a very organized situation, and our original goal was to deliver one set of software that had been, where all the pieces had actually been tested together and it was delivered as a unit. So that was the purpose of, of starting out with this. And as the part said, it's actually had enormous success, maybe more than either of us thought it was going to have, um, but people you know, have really latched on to the OPED distributions. So this is actually kind of fascinating that, um, you know, Open Fabrics as, as an organization uh, ties together a bunch of, of different, you know, um, other organizations. For example, Mellanox and QLogic and Cisco is even a member as well. So I have to say a little aside here. This is one of these interviews where I'm both an interviewer and an interviewee because I've been working in Open Fabrics and with Betsy and Ziparet for quite a long time now. Uh, but for the most part, I'll try to wear my interviewer hat here. <laughs> um, but I, I wonder if you could give us a little bit of the background here, because it, it's a fascinating blend of of open source and uh, competitors, because Mellanox and QLogic are competitors in the InfiniBand space, yet you guys work together on, on a common code base. So could you give us a little bit about how that works and how that dynamic generally works? Sure. I'll, I'll take this one to start support. Um, yeah. So it is an, it, it is a really interesting situation because there we are, arch rivals in the you know Infiniban space, and you know the short form of it is it works out incredibly well. Very very early on, um, when we were working together, support and I you know said to one another that you know our companies, you know our competitors, but our job in this instance is to help make the open fabrics enterprise distribution. Um, releases be successful, and so we've been working together on that, and it's actually been great. You know, support and I try to get together, you know, at any uh, conference that we're both at to compare notes and talk about what we need to do for the, um, you know, for the project and for the software stack, and try and you know back each other up and fill in for each other. But it was, I think, really important that we both decided that what mattered was for us to make the project successful. Yeah, I. I totally agree here with, with Betsy. Uh, I think uh, on the first meetings and also when we had the, our first face-to-face -face meetings, we said that working on the software stack uh, will be always a collaborative effort. We try to uh, help one another because our target here that we have a common and a good software stack. Most of components of this software stack are actually the same. But of course, there are different parts regarding each hardware vendor. So regarding each hardware vendor, everybody try to do the best they can. And uh, um, but petition uh, behind us when we talk about the software here. Okay, so let me ask a follow-up question on this. Um, so Open Fabrics is, is more than just OFED itself. There's a a whole pile of working groups and so on. And, and Cipret, I think you made reference to one earlier. You said EWG. Could you uh, define what EWG is and what they do? Well, EWG is an enterprise working group, and actually the main things they're doing is the Linux uh, Offed stack. Uh, by the way, there is another working group for Windows that providing the Windows, uh, Offed for Windows uh, software stack as well. Uh, there was also other uh, groups uh, like marketing and there is uh, interop that are uh, doing interoperability for the open fabrics uh, software stack and of course of the hardware as well. And I don't remember, I think there was also a legal uh, group, but I'm not sure about this. For the rest of the show, I think we're going to focus on the OFED stack and EWG, which I think is the most interest to our listener group. Uh, if not, hopefully they'll uh, get a hold of us through the nomination form and let us know that they want to hear about some other things in the future. But from gone here, you both represent QLogic and Mellanox. What are some of the other members of the OFED working group currently? Intel is certainly there. 
Um, I'm going to go blank on this. Um, Intel's there. IBM's there. Um, a number of the warp um, companies are there, and I can't remember their names offhand, but maybe support I can. Chelsea O. Chelsea yeah, we, the Chelsea O. Uh, there is uh, Intel actually has, you can say, two heads in the EWG. There is a group working on the uh, UDAPL on in general uh, management uh, utilities, and there is uh, now with IROP, there is a, they have their own uh, low level uh, IROP uh, driver. Uh, and we, there is a uh, Voltaire, who is also participating in, uh, in several uh, components and in, uh, in testing, as Betsy mentioned, IBM, and of course uh, there is Cisco, uh, that are mainly Jeff with uh, OpenMPI, and also um, for time to time uh, in the OSU as a the MPI uh, and VAPICH uh, implementation actually also participate uh, in, in the EWG uh, today. So you mentioned a, a couple of network driver manufacturers. I guess it's not impossible, but most people, when they think of OFED, they think of InfiniBand. And a lot of people you mentioned there don't actually make any InfiniBand equipment. What is their interest, or does OFED support um, equipment besides InfiniBand? So there are IROP vendors, uh, which is which are sorry uh, Chelsea and Intel currently supply IROP, and they are interesting actually that the uh, RDMA technology will be available on uh, their hardware as well. Since OFED is not only InfiniBand, it provides uh, RDMA uh, interface for applications or for libraries to to work with. So this is one kind of interest. There are other companies that are interested in helping qualification uh, of the of its software stack since it's part of the product. So this is another kind of uh, participant. And uh, so these are the main uh, companies that actually uh, actively participating in the EWG uh, effort of having this uh, release. So you mentioned RDMA technologies. Uh, can you define what RDMA is and you know, how does OFED implement that? Maybe go into a little bit about operating system bypass and these kinds of things. So in general, RDMA is remote DMA. It means that you can uh, copy uh, memory from one system to another system uh, using the, without actually uh, interfere with the CPU working on each system, but the NIC, or what in Finiband it's called HCA, actually is doing this work. And by doing it, it's provide, uh, actually, first thing I think is the CPU offload. Instead of the CPU dealing with copying uh, all the buffers from user space to kernel, from the kernel later on, to the NIC that is going to copy it to the other side, everything uh, is done by the HCA itself. This is the first thing that is important. The other thing that is important is the kernel bypass, meaning user space application can uh, work directly with the HCA without doing any context switch, without uh, the need to go to the kernel, like in, for instance, the TCP IP stack. And I think this is the thing of Bend or ARAP or the RDMA technology in general is this kernel bypass. Of course, in order to do it, the application must set some, must, uh, sorry, obey some prerequisite uh, of uh, doing memory registration and uh, using a specific API that provide the, the RDMA technology. Or in the case of MPI, actually, the MPI layer uh, implements this uh, RDMA technology and the application above are not aware of the uh, low-level uh, RDMA that is being done using the MPI. But I'm sure Jeff can explain uh, this uh, actually in a better way. 
<laughs> Maybe I, I might know a little bit about that. Yes. <laughs> but you stole my question from me. I was going to say, what do some of the upper layers actually benefit from this? So like, how does, uh, you know, why, why do we write MPIs, you know, to these lower layer? It, it, this is a particular API called verbs. Um, so it's, it's not just plain vanilla sockets, but uh, you know, how are some of the benefits of, of verbs evident to things like MPI and, and other upper layers? One thing I must say is that everybody can agree that verbs are not easy to write with. And uh, I think this is something that uh, was not yet in improved enough. Uh, and maybe something that will happen that will have some, I don't know, easier socket uh, RDMA API. Uh, for now, what we have are the verbs that are defi were defined, actually, the idea of the verbs was defined in the IB spec. And... Uh, the verbs actually provides a means for the uh, user space or, or kernel space application to, uh, to, uh, sorry, to run uh, the InfiniBand or IRAP uh, using the card. And it enables the application to have, for instance, a reliable connectivity. One of the... Oh, uh, main thing is uh, that the reliability is done here by the protocol and by the hardware and not by the software. So assuming you uh, MPI or any other uh, ULP uh, needs a reliable connectivity, it can open a connection that will be reliable. And unless it gets any error, it ensures that anything that is sent from one side will get to the other side. So this is one of the benefits uh, that the verbs layer provide, I think, is uh, reliability. Uh, another thing is actually that it provides a very uh, low latency. Uh, we talk about even sub-microsecond uh, latency for uh, small messages to get a message from one side to other side, from one hand. And from the other hand, we have a, a very high bandwidth uh, for larger messages uh, that uh, can... I think today late, latest. Uh, I don't remember actually, Jeff. Maybe you should say what's the uh, best performance uh, we get today. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't prepare the number. Yeah, <laughs> well, oh. let's suffice it to say that you can max out the whatever your PCI uh, bus is because uh, with QDR and Finiband, I think you can get pretty high rate. I have not tested QDR in Finiband myself to know uh, exactly what those numbers are either. Embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I have to look. I, I guess I have numbers somewhere. Well, you made an interesting comment in there saying that, you know, it's a hardware offload of everything. But, uh, you know, both Mellanox makes an HCA and QLogic makes an HCA. And Betsy, QLogic kind of went the other direction with that. Could you describe how, you know, what what is kind of the, the technological difference between your HCAs? Sure. Um you know, way back when uh, we started Pascal, we were working on this back in 2003, um, and, you know, this is before there was much uh, software available in open source. And what we knew people wanted to do was to run MPI really, really fast with really low latency. We took a different approach. Uh, we designed a chip that was specifically targeted toward running MPI rather than verbs, and, uh, you know, that honored the physical layers but not... Um, you know, the hardware itself didn't uh, handle, um, it didn't violate, but it didn't handle various aspects of the uh, IBTA spec. So we wrote something, um, we implemented this so that uh, we had a user-level software stack that talked directly to the chip. Um, we've got about 11 patents on the, on the chip itself to uh, run MPI through really fast. Um, Eventually, um, verbs you know caught up to this. You're asking about performance numbers on uh, for bandwidth. I think uh, either verbs or MPI over PSM end up with about 3.6 uh, gigabytes per second unidirectional bandwidth, and both of them are around one microsecond latency at zero packet um, for zero, zero packet size of system that you use. But uh, we took our approach um, to uh, to target directly into high performance and also to avoid some of the issues with um, 
scaling on InfiniBand um, because the number requirement of number of QPs uh, increases exponentially as the um, uh, as Betsy, the you were describing that QLogic went the route of the making a, of almost a, an MPI-specific uh, InfiniBand adapter. Now, what kind of equipment? So I know of people running, say, Luster on IB where Luster supports InfiniBand and uses OFED for moving the data there. So that's an example of a non-MPI use of OFED. What some, are some of the other non MPI, maybe HPC related, maybe not HPC related, where you see OFED being used? So I should say at this point that we do have a full verb, a full IBTA compliant verbs implementation on our uh, product now, it's, but it's done in software so that you can do things like run Luster, run IP over IB, and run all those other good things that one gets from, um, uh, from the Open Fabric stack. Um, and other things include, um, other things that run over verbs and are of interest include SRP, which is a storage protocol. Um, not many people are using SDP anymore now that IP over IB connected mode um, you know, get you the good bandwidth. So IP over IB is used as a replacement for um, TCP. Uh, you can communicate over that. Uh, UDAPL, um, which is used by Intel MPI. Um, UDAPL also runs on top of verbs. Uh, let's see what else is there. Oh, um, there is a RDS uh, from Oracle that gives uh, what they call reliable datagram sockets. Uh, this is used today in uh, Oracle's uh, Exadata, and uh, as far as I know, give about 10x performance uh, versus uh, other uh, Oracle uh, database. And I think this is actually the first uh, uh, EDC market uh, application that is using OFED and the verbs uh, uh, layer. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, also regarding UDAPL, uh, IBM DB2 is also using UDAPL, also something that is not uh, uh, HPC related. Uh, so there are some uh, non-HPC uh, uh, applications starting to use uh, OFED, and uh, I know also that uh, part of uh, some customers or from the mailing list, uh, sometimes uh, we can see that people that actually uh, low latency is important for them or very high bandwidth, or especially if they need both, you know. So they uh, even write their own application for verbs. Sometimes we get questions uh, from customers uh, in different companies or in the universities for research that they're writing the, their own application uh, using the verbs. Things that are... All right, well, own, let me ask a, a logical progression question from that then. So, so verbs has been around for a couple of years now. It's getting pretty mature, but it's also growing and, and changing. So let me ask each of you, um, Betsy, let's start with you. Uh, you know, how do you guys see verbs changing or OFED changing. So I know there have been some MPI specific additions and requests and whatnot, but uh, you know, in, in terms of MPI is a very obvious target, but also uh, it seems like OFED wants to grow into more than just the HPC and MPI market. Betsy, what do you see uh, OFED and or verbs doing to grow and expand and adapt to changing needs in, in these times? You know, there does seem to be a real interest in um, InfiniBand for the enterprise market um, and things that matter for the enterprise market are, you know, reliability, um, failover, uh, the ability to keep your system up and running, but to maintain that uh, high bandwidth and low latency. Um, you know, we've all uh, heard about the uh, Wall Street as kind of, you know, a new field of high-performance high computing. and. It will be quite interesting to see how Wall Street um, evolves its use of the Open Fabrics software and the InfiniBand software. 
you know, they really, 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 really care about that last 50 nanoseconds of latency, especially on um, IP over IB or what they used to be interested in was STP, but that's no longer so interesting. So they really hey, and, want... and just a clarification for everybody who was listening, Betsy, you really did say 50 nanoseconds, right? I really did say. You know, the number of times uh, one of the engineers on my team has um, heard me tell them to go back and get me back that last 50 nanoseconds of latency, um, we, we finally have just put a time at the end of the release where we make sure that um, whatever was required to get that back is done. Um, you know, <laughs> low latency is really important, uh, as is high bandwidth and, you know, as is a good shape to the performance curve. Um, so, yeah. so Ciparet, let me let me throw the same question at you. Where where do you see OFED going and, and verbs growing and uh, e even in MPI kinds of realms? Because I know you guys have done some interesting things mm -hmm. there. Yes. Yeah, so I think uh, I agree with Betsy regarding the financial market, and I'm sure maybe uh, more different type of markets uh, uh, will follow. Uh, and I want to say that in a way. Uh, we, we did a different direct uh, way from QLogic. QLogic started from MPI only and then expanded to support all verbs. We started from supported all verbs and then we realized that there are some special MPI capabilities that we should provide to help MPI to be more effective. For instance, things like maybe a collective offload, uh, for example, or maybe other um, other tasks that are uh, currently done by the MPI layer or done by the CPU uh, is something that we can uh, now uh, have offload in our hardware. So, for instance, uh, another thing that uh, we can do, for instance, is uh, learn maybe another market that actually also related to the HPC is using the uh, new uh, GPUs. Uh, I think everybody knows that in big clusters, uh, the new graphical uh, accelerators actually been used to do some uh, com uh, computations. So we have to learn how to actually uh, use uh, the GPUs as well, you know, how we can combine them with, with InfiniBand. This is also a you know, new direction that uh, still related to the HPC market, but uh, we are approaching. Uh, we also, uh, another thing that is interesting is maybe, uh, I don't know, but may maybe one day it will come that we'll have some simple uh, uh, API to, to use the, the RDMA. Um, we, we hear this request for a long time, uh, we haven't started working on this, but this is something that uh, you know we think about. So maybe one day it will happen. But... So Paul is right. The G GPU technology is extremely exciting, and you know customers are very interested in that. So I'm I'm a sysadmin. Uh, moving on to some other stuff. OFED, we install it using what Red Hat provides us, and OFED's pretty complicated, somewhat confusing compared to dealing with Ethernet um, and other networks that we've worked with before. Uh, is there a definitive source of documentation or just a OFED for dummies book out there somewhere that kind of describes low-level driver, user space driver, um, kernel driver? There is not documentation out there on OFED. I think it's a great opportunity for somebody. There is documentation, you know, as part of the OFED download in the docs directory that talks about how to do the installation and talks about the various components in the software. Um, I don't know if when you get that directly from Red Hat if you see that documentation or not. So what is the recommended well, way to use OFED then? Should we stick to using what Red Hat provides us or should we be trying to use what comes off the Open Fabrics website? It, it really depends on what your needs are. Um, taking up from Red Hat has got the great advantage that Red Hat's packaged it up. You just install your system. Your 
um, able to honor your, you know, your support license with uh, Red Hat because you're not making any changes on it. However, um, sometimes the Red Hat uh, installations are rather behind the software that is available from the Open Fabrics website because obviously Red Hat has to wait until we're done with it and then you know get the right release vehicle to put the changes into their system. So um, either either one will work if you want the newest stuff, you want to get it from the Open Fabrics website or from you know your vendor site. Um, but if you want it packaged up and you don't mind the fact that maybe there are bug fixes available that you don't necessarily have uh, in your Red Hat release because it's um, based on an earlier, earlier version of the software, then uh, you know Red Hat is probably a good solution for you. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I agree with Betsy. I also want to mention that also Novell with Slash also have a, a inbox a support of a Open Fabrics software, uh, and also I, I must say that. Uh, uh, each vendor, I'm sure, I know QLogic has, and we have, and uh, Voltaire has their own. We have our own, uh, you can say, uh, distribution of uh, of OFED uh, that uh, actually is already provided, for instance, in binary RPMs. One of the things with OFED is we provide source RPMs, which means you have to compile everything yourself, and you have to, you must have a kernel with all the uh, kernel sources installed and the compilers and all this, uh, which I understand is not always uh, easy for the end user, for the IT user. So uh, we provide uh, on our website uh, uh, binaries uh, for a selected uh, last uh, distributions that are actually needed for the customers. Because as Betsy mentioned, if what's inside the distro is good for you, so this is actually the best. But maybe you want to have, you know, maybe there is a new hardware or a new major feature or a critical bug fix that is not there. And maybe it will be in the most greatest and latest of uh, the distro but you are still using an older version of the operating system. I think one of the major benefits of OFED is what we're calling uh, the support for older version of the distros. Uh, and we have what we call backports. We have a way to support older. For instance, today Red Hat 5 Update 5 is latest from Red Hat, but we still support Red Hat 5 Update 3. So if someone uh, wish to stay with the older operating system but takes the latest and greatest uh, feature and the uh, fixes, uh, it's uh, possible to do with OFED. So that's a good lead into the next question here. So I see on the Open Fabrics website that uh, OFED 1.5.1 is the latest current stable and 1.5.2 is in the works. And I've seen a couple of emails discussing what we should be doing for 1.6. And so on. So, uh, could you tell us what some of the new features are that are are coming in in future releases of Open Fabrics? At least in one five one, I think one of the important uh, uh, new features that was there is actually uh, the what the Rocky technology, which I think maybe today it's just called Roy R O E. I'm I'm not sure what should I say, uh, but there is a spec called is uh, Rocky that actually enable uh, the regular infinite band verbs working over a regular uh, Ethernet. So this is one of the new features uh, in 151. And uh, actually, this uh, technology is these days starting to be integrated uh, by Roland, that we haven't mentioned him, but he's actually the uh, RDMA uh, subsystem maintainer in Linux kernel, which we work a lot with. And I think we should give him some credit in this talk uh, as well. Uh, so actually, this uh, new technology is now being integrated into the Linux kernel. So this is for 151, as long, of course, as the bug fixes and the changes uh, that we are doing uh, and supporting more operating system. And, uh, in 152, uh, I think um, at least from 
what we are working is actually we work very hard now to improve uh, SDP. We have made uh, added SDP zero copy, uh, which is very good for CPU utilization and large messages, and we are working to uh, improve uh, SDP stability. Uh, this is something that uh, should be in 1.5.2. And uh, as usual, we will support the uh, latest distro like Red Hat 5 Update 5 or uh, whenever Slash 11 uh, Service Pack 1 will come out, we'll uh, support uh, this too. And I so think. So, Ziprat, quick, quick clarification question. You were saying there were some nice improvements to SDP. Could you say exactly what SDP is? Oh, SDP is a direct socket uh, protocol. It's uh, defined, it's a protocol that is defined in the uh, InfiniBand spec of how to provide a TCP socket uh, implementation in the kernel that actually uh, bypass the TCP uh, kernel stack and doing it using RDMA uh, or just uh, technology. Uh, Betsy, maybe you wish to add, I, I know you also had some things uh, that you wanted uh, as a new things uh, from QLogic in the coming uh, releases. That's right. Um, we're submitting our uh, PSM layer, Performance Guild Messaging layer, which is a user uh, level stack that gives us our high uh, accelerated MPI performance, and we are releasing that to open fabrics with the 152 release um, and we're quite excited about that. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is that uh, RDMA over Ethernet, if I'm correct on this, is actually based on the software implementation that uh, QLogic did um, to implement verbs in software and I think that that ended up migrating to be used as the basis for RDMA over Ethernet. Is, um, is that accurate, support? Well, this is something that also can be used. This is, uh, well, we called it in a way soft Rocky. Uh, this is if you want to use uh, the Rocky uh, using any, any hardware. Uh, the Rocky implementation that uh, at least Melanox provided is actually uh, running on our hardware. We have the hardware is doing it. So, but you know, the other was just an interesting example of how open source works. You know that this mm. software was released for one purpose and ended up um, migrating to you know kind of a different purpose for a different mm. company. And cool. you know, that's one of the good examples of of open source. Yeah. And uh, I think if we look uh, more for the future for things like one six. Uh, so I guess uh, we'll start to see things like uh, KVM support with the SRIUV, which also is a new standard uh, for supporting a, a lot of uh, virtual machines. This is something that currently uh, we don't have in OFED. Uh, maybe more uh, scalability solutions. Uh, today the CPUs are, are multi-core, sorry, not yeah, CPU, sorry, are multi-core and VC systems with more and more cores, and uh, we have to see how to address uh, this kind of uh, new technologies coming, uh, maybe improving things in the management, especially for next, uh, I don't remember how, how many petaflops clusters they want there. Oh, but, uh, the more the last, better, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the large scale of, uh, of the clusters is also some uh, give us some challenges in the InfiniBand and how to manage this uh, network. So what are some of the explicit uses of OFED that may be high profile? I mean, we know that we build MPI stacks on top of them, storage transport. Um, what's been some of the feathers in your hat sort of of OFED enabled this? Let's see. Well, it's um, OFED, um, InfiniBand, whichever way you want to look at it. You know, the government labs um, use InfiniBand, and, uh, you know, they do interesting government lab work on it. Um, climate, uh, we, we get a kick out of uh, uh, Red Bull as a 
partner, you know, we would, uh, you know, listen to, you know, I had engineers on the team who would listen to their racists and then, you know, talk with the Red Bull people on Monday to help uh, tune things up for them. Um, uh, oil and gas is another interesting use, you know, doing uh, exploration for, um, for, for, for oil. Uh, climate control, you know, there's, um, there is one institution that is, you know, attempting to, you know, analyze all of the weather data that was gathered before Hurricane Katrina to see if they could have actually predicted Hurricane Katrina beforehand or its intent. Obviously, they predicted it, but it, you know, predicted its intensity and what happened with it. So it's a lot of really, it's one of my favorite things about working in this space is that there are such interesting problems being worked on and solved. And also, I think we can mention that uh, uh, if you look at the top 500 list of uh, uh, most fast uh, clusters, uh, you can see more and more InfiniBand clusters there, especially uh, also in the, if you look at the top, 10, uh, top 100, uh, there are many, many and uh, more coming, uh, things like some name I remember, like the World Runner uh, or... I don't know if Jeff remember name of more uh, very big cluster uh, today. I think we work in China in very interesting, very large cluster called Doning, and uh, uh, so I think uh, you can see by the top 500 that uh, and most of, uh, or I think maybe all of the InfiniBand, but I'm not sure, are actually running the Ofed the software stack coming from the distro or coming from the Ofed. Um, okay, so that's a that's a pretty broad spectrum of usages there. So then, what is the licensing situation with Open Fabrics? I think it's kind of interesting. Why don't we spend a minute or two on that? Okay, so Open Fabrics. When we started the, doing the alliance, uh, we decided that the code should have dual license, which is GPL a choice of GPL and uh, BSD. And the reason for it is the GPL was important in order to get to the Linux kernel. This was a requirement and to be part of the dispos from one hand. And from other hand, some companies want to take the software and change it, enhance it to their own uh, internal usage and not provide uh, the code again as required in GPL. And then they can choose to use it as a BSD and only give the copyright as uh, required. Okay. Well, thank you, both of you. Um, could you give some information about where to track down OFED, uh, website, mailing list? www.openfabrics.org. And there's user mailing lists where you can get help and things on there, anyone who's trying to use OFED? That's right. Okay. Well, thank you, both of you. This show will be up soon on rce-cast.com. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.